Elkhart Lake is to champ cars as Spa is to Formula One. Today, the four-mile track will test the best. Alex Zanardi seeking win number seven of 98. Michael Andretti, who starts from his first pole for three and a half years. Adrian Fernandez, winner of two races, including last time out. Jimmy Fasser, the 1996 champion and winner on two ovals this year. Greg Moore, just four points behind Fasser, battling for second in the series. And Brian Herter, who makes his third front row start of this season. Welcome to Road America, Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. We're in the northern part of the Midwest of the United States at a tremendous racetrack and it's a beautiful sunny day. Ben Edwards and Jeremy Shaw here with you to guide you through what should be a tremendous 50 lap event. It's round 14 of the FedEx Championship Series and the cars there lined up already on the track, ready to set off once the word has been given. The pole sitter is Michael Andretti. It's his first pole in some three and a half years. A tremendous performance in yesterday's qualifying. He is the top pole sitter in the series. I mean, this feels almost as good as a race win for me personally because uh, I've been wanting to pole so bad and it's been so long and I just thank God that it finally came. It's just a perfect uh, qualifying session for me. But now we got to follow it up with a win. You know, there's a lot on the line with the Marlboro money and i got to still win somebody a million bucks in the Texaco uh, uh, campaign that they have going. So, uh, you know, we, uh, we still got our work cut out for us, but I'm very happy right now. Michael's tally up to 31 pole positions, but it was a great day yesterday for Team Rahal as well. They've been strong most of the way through the season, either Bobby Rahal or Brian Herter. They've been towards the front of the field in almost all the races so far. They're still seeking their first victory, however. But young Brian Herter, there was race engineer Ray Lito, and Bobby Rahal, the veteran of this series. He'll be retiring at the end of the year, but he hopes to take a win. That was last week, though. Brian Herter out of the race of that first lap skirmish, and his teammate Bobby Rahal goes on to take a fine third place finish. So, Brian Herder starts second, Bobby Royal starts in third place today. If we take a look at the points, neither of them featuring in the top six. Zanardi still with a very healthy lead, but a good battle developing for second place. Vassa heading that battle at the moment, but Fernandez and Pruitt joining in as a result of their 1-2 finish last time out in mid-Ohio. Well, this track is different to mid-Ohio, there's no doubt about that. It is called the Spa of the United States. A 14-corner, four-mile racetrack that sees a great deal of elevation change. Let's hear what Michael Andretti he has to say about it as he takes us for a lap. All right, here we go. We're starting lap of Road America, going past start finish line, up to almost uh, 200, well, probably about 200 miles per hour in sixth gear, braking hard at the two marker down to fourth gear, very fast corner, about 140 miles per hour, leads you down a hill, go from fourth to fifth, then you brake hard back in the third gear to about 120 through here, leads you onto the back straightaway, very important corner. You go all the way up to top gear, which is sixth gear up to again uh, around 200 miles per hour and you break very hard into the slowest corner which is turn five coming up here break at the two marker you go down to second gear leads you up a steep hill here you go from second to third and then back down to second to an off camber corner uh, turn six here it falls off a little bit and leads into a very fast corner here which you're in fourth gear through here very fast and lead, then you go down a hill into uh, another second gear corner from fifth to second and then here leads you into the, the carousel, which is a very fast corner. You're in fourth gear through here, um, pulling close to four and a half Gs through here. Uh, and then you upshift here to fifth gear, then sixth gear to the fastest corner on the track, which is a flat out kink. Leads you on to the straightaway back here, which is not really straight, uh, up to 200 and some miles per hour again. Hard braking at the two marker down to second gear in the Canadian corner, which leads you up the hill into a very fast left hander, which is in fourth gear under the bridge here, very quick. Leads you into the last corner, which is again a very important corner, which is third gear, because it leads you on to this long straightaway, which takes you to the checkered flag. And, and a very, uh, very uh, quick lap here of uh, Road America. And how about that for a great racetrack? It is so popular amongst the drivers. They love this place. It is such a challenge, and there's real overtaking possibilities here as well. Last time out in mid-Ohio, however, things didn't go quite as cleanly and smoothly as Carter officialdom really wanted. There were a number of incidents. 
Greg Moore was one of the ones to get hammered afterwards. He had this accident in the pit lane. He picked up a $5,000 fine and he was put on probation. Brian Herter, he qualified first what last week, but the first corner incident with Dario Franchitti also took out another potential winner there in Jimmy Vassa. A five, a probation is Brian Herter's penalty for this week and a few weeks thereafter. The biggest fine of all, however, was saved up for the championship leader. Alex Zanardi hit PJ Jones, he hit JJ Leto, and then in this incident, he hit Elio Castro Neves. They threw the book at him. He's got a $50,000 fine, and he's been put on probation. Alex Zanardi starting quite a long way down on the grid this time. Let's take a look then at how they line up for today's race. Michael Andretti on that pole position, Brian Herter starting alongside him. Back on the second row, Bobby Rahal and Scott Pruitt, who makes it four Ford-powered cars on the top two rows. Row three of the Rigid, Gilles de Ferran and Dario Franchitti. They were quick on Friday. Both end up in the gravel traps, though, on Saturday. Row four, Christian Filippoldi, still looking for his first win, and Greg Moore. Adrian Fernandez, the winner at Mid-Ohio, lines up alongside Alonso Jr., who's never won the race here. Next up, Alex Zanardi, our championship leader, and Tony Kanaan, who's the top rookie again. 13th on the grid, Andre Ribeiro, driving with a broken leg, suffered in a crash on Friday. Alongside him is Jimmy Vassa. On row 8 to the grid, Mark Blundell and Patrick Carpentier. 17th on the grid, Paul Tracy, who won here in 93, and JJ Leto on his first visit. Max Pappas is 19th, the fastest of the Toyotas. Alongside him is Walter Salles. 21st on the grid, Mauricio Guzman. Myriad mechanical problems this weekend, and a young rookie, Elio Castro Neves. Behind them, Robbie Gordon and Michelle Jourdain Jr., who was fastest for Peyton Coin racing this morning. And then on the 13th row of the grid, we have Richie Hearn in the Swift, and Alex Barron again in the Eagle chassis of All-American Racers. The last row sees Art Meyer in the Lola, and PJ Jones alongside him. He's still in the Reynard chassis. That's how our 28 cars line up for this afternoon's race. I guess one of the major changes there, or surprises, is Zanardi so far down in 11th. Apparently Mark Blundell has already been in the pits. He's got a slight problem. view from Michael Andretti's car just behind the pace car. It's been such a long time since he's been in this spot, uh, Jeremy. Way back to Long Beach in 1995. There, by the way, is the problem for Mark Blundell. Well, they, we said that they've had a tough weekend, Pac West, and it just seems to be going on that way. Yeah, all sorts of mechanical problems for both of these guys. They're putting the engine cover back on there, I think, for Mark Blundell's Motorola car, and hopefully he'll get back in the fray. But, you know, Michael Andretti, he's a very interesting story. He always used to be known as the qualifier in this series. He's had 30 poles at least every Everybody, but he hasn't, as you said earlier on, he hasn't had a pole for three and a half years. You know, he'd actually been concentrating purposefully on the race setup for several years, but this year, with the tyres being more consistent, that allows him to really use a very similar setup for qualifying and the race. So now he's able to concentrate more on that ultimate lap. And he's been close several times, but finally got it together yesterday afternoon. Great for Michael Andretti. Good for Goodyear too. It's their first pole position of the year. And in fact, a number of the Goodyear runners in much more competitive form this weekend. Gilles de Ferran, you ride on board with him. Now, he is on fifth place on the grid, but he was on provisional pole on Friday. He went off in Saturday's qualifying, which denied him the chance, perhaps, of challenging Andretti for pole. Very much so. He loves this racetrack, as do most of the drivers, but he's been quick here all weekend, but that one little slip, that put him in the gravel trap there and ended his hopes of the pole. Well, also on the Goodyear tyre, Christian Fittipaldi, he lines up in seventh place on the grid, and there's no doubt that uh, the tyre that Goodyear provided this weekend for this track is in much better shape. The question is, will it last the distance in the race? They'll be doing some 16, 17 laps in each stint, and the question is whether the tyre will last. Brian Herter there, right behind Michael Andretti, and uh, Team Ray Hall in great shape. Second and third places on the grid, remember, Scott Pruitt in fourth position. A little bit of news about uh, Scott Pruitt for this weekend, though, Jeremy. He's uh, switched teams to Archero Wells. We'll talk about that a bit later. There's a, a look at the race details, 50 laps, and uh, the pit window, as you can see there, between 16 and 18 laps. Yeah, they really need to get to lap 16 or lap 17 to, before they make their first pit stop, make the next stop on lap 33 or 30 and that gives them another 16 lap run to the chequered flag. That's if there's no caution flags to call. If there are some full course cautions, that'll train into strategy. But in order to make it to the finish on just two stops, they need to go at least to lap 16. 
Well, they're lining up now and we're getting ready for the start of the race. Mark Blundell was seen in trouble with electronic uh, problems, apparently, they're reporting from the pit lane. But we are getting ready now for the start of the Texaco Havoline 200 from Road America. Watch them at the back there. They're already clambering over the curb as they accelerate out of that last corner. And they come up to pass our position here on the main straight. And Michael Andretti gets his foot down at the green flag waves. And the race is on. Round 14 of the championship. Andretti in the black car trying to defend his position now. A little bit of jostling behind. Canaan was almost on the pit lane exit as they came through. Now, are they going to make it safely through the first corner? It looks pretty good. It's Andretti from Herta, from Rahal. Brian spun it, or has he? And there's problems. Answers off. Answers off. And he, he was hit by Alex Zanardi from the back, Alex Jr. And I think that was the Claire's car. I think of Patrick Carponche, who was on the grass also, and he tried to turn into the corner. But I reckon Answer was a hit from behind by Alex Zanardi. Well, we can't see a great deal at the moment. Look at the dust cloud down there and uh, it's all gone wrong. wrong. Let's take a look from Gilles de Ferran. I think Pruitt got sideways. He got hit by de Ferran. Now, that was a separate incident, so de Ferran just touching the back of Pruitt's car, but behind, something else was going on. Look at Unser over there on the uh, right. Zanardi, yeah, he gets locked up. Zanardi locks up under brakes. Well spotted that, Jeremy. He hits the back of Al Unser Jr. And he, of course, already is on probation, Alex Zanardi. He had a book thrown at him last weekend, the largest one. Here we are on board with Alex Zanardi. He goes to the outside side of god dear i mean look how much he closed up there he was two or three car lengths behind going in there into the braking zone and i think he thought he was at the front of the field unfortunately there's another 13 14 cars in front of him crazy move by alex Lenardi once again well halanza jr absolutely sick about that he's never won this race it's been his nemesis this race track to a certain extent right back to his uh, can days it's never gone well for him at all and uh, well it's walking away again from an incident there's no way He's got any chance of getting a result here this weekend. Patrick Carpentier is the other one there. Patrick started down in 16th position on the grid. And for the French-Canadian, it's obviously a, a torrid start to the race. There is on board with Alex Zanardi. And as you say, the card officials are going to be taking a close look at that. Meanwhile, the uh, green flag is still out. We have not gone full course yellow, which is good news in terms of keeping the race going. It's Andretti, our leader. Herta second. Rahal third. De Ferran fourth. Frankitti in sixth. In seventh position is Alex Alex Zanardi in eighth place, Greg Moore, then Tony Canaan and Adrian Fernandez are top ten. Pruitt recovered from that uh, initial incident and he's actually in 11th position, so that's a pretty impressive recovery from Scott Pruitt. As soon as there is uh, Carpaccio's car being uh, dragged out of the way by the, the crane there, and uh, I think Carpaccio was really having his own accident as he came down the hill there. Uh, he strayed a couple of left side wheels onto the grass and he was sideways irrespective of those two going off in front of him. But uh, there is, uh, towards the back of the pack there, uh, Alex Zanardi, he actually got going again. Got going actually moved up to seventh place. I'm not sure I managed that. Well, he didn't actually slow down much. I mean, he hit the back of Lance's car, but it didn't actually slow him down very much. I don't think anybody got past him as a result. So Zanardi is following Christian Filippoldi. Just ahead of them, you saw a quick flash of Dario Franchitti and Gilles de Ferran. So you're looking back over our shoulder here, we can see the, the steward's room is actually behind us in our commentary box. And there's a lot of discussion going on, going on there. The chief steward, Wally Dallenbach, we talked about at the beginning of the show, all those probations he handed out last week as we're on board with Christian Filippoldi, but uh, he was adamant in the drivers' meeting yesterday that there should not be a first lap action, and there was, and clearly two drivers there were being very bold on the first lap. That's right, so uh, bad news indeed, Zanardi is likely to pick up some sort of penalty. Now, whether they'll give him a penalty in the race, we don't know. Let's hear what Roger Penske has to say about it. So strong, and now it's uh, going to fall into pieces right here. Let's talk about what just happened. It's a tough deal. Uh, Al said he just got run into the back. I saw it on the monitor. Zanardi just ran into him and knocked him up in the air and there was nothing they could do so I hope that the stewards uh, take a look at that and take the appropriate action. I was going to say he's already had a, uh, he's on probation, he's already had a fine, what do you think needs to be done now? I couldn't hear that, the car's gone by. What needs to be done now with I, Zanardi? I think you got to leave that up to the officials but hopefully they'll take a good look at it and make the, take the proper action. And I think Roger Penske wants to see something done. Well, no surprise there, but uh, we're going to have to wait and see what that action is uh, likely to be, whether it'll be taken during the race or after the race. Well, we'll just have to wait and see what uh, car officials have to say. Andretti is our race leader. He had an advantage of some four seconds at the end of the first lap. Battle going on, Bobby Rahal versus Gilda Ferran. And uh, Ferran, as you mentioned, Jeremy, loves this place, looks in great form here. I wonder how uh, the mood is down in the target Chip Ganassi pit. We've got uh, Chip Ganassi ready, hopefully, to talk to us in a moment. 
moment. Let's go down to the pits here for a minute. monitor. We've just heard from Roger Penske, and he is accusing your driver, Zanardi, of creating that incident. Well, I don't know if my driver created it. I think it was... Uh, Alex came on, he said, look, everybody in front of me was locked up on the brakes, and so was he locked up on the brakes. Simple as that. I think it was a racing accident. Do you feel like you're under a microscope because of the penalties from a week ago? Well, I think there's been enough discussion about penalties the last couple weeks, and I'll, I'll let the fans decide that. Okay, that's the feeling here from the Ganassi pit. Yeah, and that's very interesting indeed. You know, Wally Dallenbach, I was talking to him during the week, the chief steward, and he said the problem with Zanardi is he's a very fast driver, there's no doubt about that, and when he's at the front of the pack, he's fine, but when he's farther back in the field, he can't really relate to that somehow, and that's when he begins to make mistakes. He didn't seem to realize there's another 12, 13 cars in front of him going down there into that second corner on the racetrack, and uh, he just braked way too late for the circumstances. But look at the lead that Michael Andretti has pulled out. That's incredible. Look at how big it is. Uh, Andretti leading by five and a half seconds at the end of three laps. Herta in second place. Ray Hall in third. Then Deferron, Franchitti, Fittipaldi. As uh, look at this, Greg Moore goes past Alex Zanardi. Great move there from Greg Moore. And Moore moves himself up into seventh position. Behind them, Tony Canaan and Adrian Fernandez. The action on board, Alex Zanardi, he is definitely in trouble. He's being passed left, right and centre there. Scott Pruitt going past the Italian. The car obviously not working very well. After that first lap incident where he hit the back of Alonso Jr., you can see the tyre marks are on the nose, but there must be more damage than that. Yeah, no other uh, apparent damage to that car, but certainly uh, he's in trouble. It, uh, Catherine, not Catherine, Tony Canaan went past there. Now down the inside goes his teammate, Jimmy Vassar, looks to it, and uh, Zanardi lets him go. Clearly Zanardi with a problem. That is the other team called Green Car right right behind there of Paul Tracy. Let's go down to the pits now. Can you tell us about the situation? Well, I don't know anything. I got drilled from behind really, really hard. Somebody used me for brakes in the, the corner. It sent my back end up flying, and then I was in just a bunch of dirt from there on, and then Patrick came and hit my front end, and, uh, you know, that was enough damage to put us out. How much of this did you anticipate, or were you concerned about starting in that fifth row, kind of mid-pack? I was concerned about it, but, um, you know, with the recent stuff going on in the, in the starts of the races, you know, I figured the guys are, have got to listen to Wally sometime or another, and uh, lo and behold, they don't listen at all. All right, that's Ellenser Jr. He's on the way back to his pits, and clearly a lot of, a lot of disappointment. Well, that's true, but uh, we watch the cars go across the line again. It's five laps completed now. As Zanardi still stays out there. He doesn't bother to come into the pits and uh, make adjustments. Obviously, he's hoping to hold out there somewhere or other. He's down to 12th position now. Uh, Jimmy Fasser moved ahead of him a little while ago. He's got Paul Tracy leaning on him next. JJ Letter right behind him. Then it's Richie Hearn. Now, Richie Hearn's made up a lot of ground in this race, hasn't he? He certainly has. He passed a couple of cars. That last lap, he got past uh, Andre Ribeiro, who, of course, we talked about earlier on. He's driving with a broken leg. He has a brace on his leg. And just a chip to and there is Paul Tracy down the inside of Alex Zanardi, and Zanardi uh, not uh, fighting that position at all. So once again, another slide back. That it puts now Zanardi back into 13th position. Yeah, so very much uh, struggling behind uh, Richie Hearn at the back of this group. Max Pappis and Robbie Gordon are the next two on the road. Meanwhile, Andretti's lead last time around was up to 6.7 seconds. And pulling away at, at least at a half a second a lap. But you know, at this early stage in the game, I'm surprised that Michael really is pushing so hard. He's only doing 1 minute 45.5, which is a good five seconds away from his qualifying time. But still, fuel is a concern at this rate. It always is. But, uh, let's come back to that. We'll get down to the pit lane and we'll have a word with Elio Castaneda. Out of the race already. Let's talk about what happened to start with. Yeah, well, unfortunately, uh, the broke header. Uh, they broke the header in uh, the connect in the gearbox. And unfortunately, I mean, it was so early in the beginning. We had uh, not even two laps. I mean, almost. And... Uh, I started getting smoke in my car, and the pit was saying, no, you're running okay, the computer's okay. I said, yeah, but it's a lot of smoke here inside the cockpit. No, keep going, keep going, until the moment that it definitely was, was a broke. In this case, the driver is definitely right. We want to talk about the racing action on the track. We already had some incidents. From your standpoint, where you were at, did it seem like everybody was racing fairly, or were some people jumping the gun? Everybody on the first turn really behave. Everybody behave yourself. And on the second turn, I think one of the cars break outside of the track and start spinning. And the other one start breaking. I mean, it was a big pack over there. The track is really good. I mean, the track is clean. And uh, was it just racing action? Or were people taking risks? I think people tried to gain position, but uh, I mean, I know it's always 
so crowded over there, so they're going to be okay for next race. Yeah, the Castro Neves out of the race. <laughs> We're riding on board with Gilles de Ferran at the moment. He rides in fourth position. Dario Franchitti is definitely applying plenty of pressure to the back of the Valvoline car, as we saw from that onboard camera. And behind that, behind uh, that second place car, Brian had a long string of cars, and nobody really pushing too hard again at this stage in the race. But there is uh, the two cars there of Gilles de Ferran and uh, Dario Franchitti. But uh, look at Andretti's lead. He is long gone down this back straight and into turn 12 at Canada Corner. He turns in. He He's gone out of the corner, is Michael Andretti, and we're still looking back. And then finally, is Brian Herzer and his team, Rahal teammate, Bobby Rahal. Yeah, it's an incredible lead, isn't it, so that he's built up. So nearly eight seconds on the last lap. It looks like it's even more now, and he was over a second a lap faster than Brian Herzer on that last lap. So, uh, incidents are plenty in this race. Another of the drivers who's gone out of this one, we've seen Helio castro Evans a moment ago, was uh, Patrick Carpentier. Now, he was involved in that uh, early problem with Al Unser Jr. when he got hit by Alex Zanardi. We've got Carpentier down in the pit lane. Hopefully we'll get a chance to speak to him in just a moment. Meanwhile, the leaders across the line as Michael Andretti Patrick completes Carpentier, seven laps. You had a big hit there. Are you all right physically? Yeah, I couldn't see where Anser was. Uh, somebody spun him around at first and then I came with two cars and then Paul Tracy moved me to uh, into the grass and there was no way I could stop and I just uh, hit Anser afterward. It was a pretty big hit, but uh, we're okay. This first lap, it seems like almost every week now, Rick Recurring incidents. How concerned as a driver are you about this trend? It's a shame, you know. I think we had a great car this morning, and I thought we we're going to do good. Same for Ansar. And uh, the guys are really aggressive on the first lap, but uh, we're all aggressive, you know. It's uh, basically on yellows and first laps is the place we can pass some cars, and it's getting tight. And competition is tough, and everybody is trying to uh, to. Uh, in a position. Thank you. Thank you. Huh? We just saw Alex Zanardi in the pits there. They let, changed the left rear. They put fuel in the car as well. Didn't change all the tyres. Maybe that's where they think the problem is. Yeah, it could be maybe in that melee down there at turn three, as they call it. Uh, he had some problems. They picked up maybe some some debris on maybe just a slight cut in the tyre all it takes to upset the handling mainly not even a full puncture but uh, they'll change that tyre and get him out on the fray and see what he can do but of course a long long way back back uh, from the front of the field already uh, and he'd slip back to 19th place before he even made that pit stop so uh, but meanwhile there is Michael Andretti a country a Sunday afternoon drive for this young man yeah, so far so good for Michael Andretti. Winner of uh, one race this year so far. It was the season opener at Homestead. He did the same uh, last season as well, but never managed to win another one. Look down there, though, at the tyres. Now, that's uh, Zanardi's tyre, and that uh, is obviously the flat spot that caused the problem. Now, it was interesting. I was talking to one of the engineers this morning, and they were saying that because of the high speeds run at this track, the tyre companies tend to build these tyres with a very thin layer of tyre, of rubber. That was uh, Andre Ribeiro's car there, by the way, that has just been overtaken by Zanardi and there we see a view of Ribeiro just come back to those tyres for a moment though a very thin layer of rubber on the tyre if you do lock up, if you do flat spot you can wear away that thin layer very quickly and be down to the carcass and it looks as though that's exactly what had happened to Zanardi well, there, Andre Ribeiro, he's pulled over to the side of the road. The man driving with a broken leg here today. He actually fractured the fibula in his lower left leg. Well, uh, obviously, his race is not going to last long. Doesn't look as though that's the reason for having stopped. Looks mechanical to me for the moment. Andretti here is race leader. Welcome back to Road America, Elkhart Lake, where a full-course caution because of Andre Ribeiro's car has brought the pace car out, and it has brought a few cars into the pits. Notably, our race leader decided to come in. Now, Brian Herter and Bobby Rahal decided not to come in. Michael Andretti has come into the pits to take on his first load of fuel. Interesting strategies going on here, Jeremy. We, were ex we knew that uh, the furthest they could go was 16, 17 laps, and they got to about half that. So some have decided to stop and some haven't. Yeah, the vast majority did stop, but my, my reckoning, the only people that didn't stop were both Team Ray Hall cars, which to me is a little bit surprising, and also JJ Leto uh, farther back down the field, and Alex Nardi, because had already stopped. Uh, but uh, I think most everybody else, oh, Greg Moore was a final one as well, of course, he'll be up in third place now, but uh, very interesting indeed. Uh, all these other guys, they will have to make two more pit stops in any case, and uh, the Team Ray Hall plus... Uh, Greg Moore and JJ Leto were hoping that they can get to the end also just on two pit stops. So there we are. This is going to throw everything up in the air completely. Michael Andretti, who's been the dominant force in the early laps here, but uh, now on a different strategy to Brian Herter and Bobby Rahal, who have proved that they are fast here all weekend. Now, I wonder if uh, they know that their tyres are likely to last all the way to the, the uh, 
17 lap mark, perhaps that's part of the decision. Alex Zanardi, uh, he did uh, not come in then. He's already made one pit stop, of course, to put fuel in, and so he decided not to come in then as well. Yeah, he was at the back of the pack already. He'll move up a few places when some of the guys at the back uh, came in, but he didn't make up many places at all, so he's still a long way uh, toward the back of this field. But uh, it's certainly going to be very interesting now, of course, uh, the two team rail cars now, of course, have the advantage of track position. They can set the pace. And while some of the other guys might have fresh tyres, will they be able to take advantage of it? So here comes Brian Herter, ready to take the green flag. We're about to get this race underway. Herter accelerates a little bit before the corner and then accelerates hard as he comes out of turn number 14. And the green flag will greet them as they crest the rise at the top of the hill and go for it once again. Watch out for Bobby, though. He's got a good run on his teammate, Bob Brian. And Brian goes to the inside. Bobby goes to the outside. He's had a tremendous run out of that last corner. And if there's one rule between these two, it's that they don't take each other off. And Brian Herter lets Bobby go through without too much of a battle. He's got to watch out for Greg Moore now, who is also all over the back of him with JJ Leto there now, up into fourth place, courtesy of not coming into the pit. But let me tell you that Michael Andretti is in fifth place. He's got a full tank of fuel. His car will be heavy. He's got a good set of tyres on, though. Look at this. Greg Moore trying to go for second. Brian Hurt. Oh, no! Brian, you so nearly took out your team, boss. He braked late to stop Greg coming past him. And he so nearly took Bobby off with him. Yeah, he threw the car sideways to not hit Bobby Rahal there. And he was thinking of his teammate. He knew he was going to be... Oh, oh goodness, dear, that's right Alex there. Barron in the uh, Eagle Toyota. What happened there? I have no idea. He must, the yellow flags must have been out. Whether Alex had some sort of mechanical problem coming down there, it's tough to say. But uh, certainly he lands up there. Look at that, right on top of the car. Uh, of wow. Brian Herder, but Herder, he, uh, he was under pressure there from Greg Moore. He tried to brake as late as he could, and clearly he left his braking too late. And at the last minute, he knew he was going to hit uh, his teammate, Bobby Rahal. Hitting anybody is not good news, and particularly his team leader, Bobby Rahal. So he just threw the car sideways. He just clipped Rahal, but luckily not nearly as hard as he would have done if he'd have just slammed into the back of him uh, uh, on, on all four wheels pointing in a straight way. So uh, a shame for Herder, a mistake by Herder there, for sure. Bad mistake, really. Uh, he he was under pressure from Greg Moore. Well, let's take a look. Apparently the driver is okay. We could see him nodding around and we've heard uh, a good report. Now, there's Herter. He so nearly hits the back of Rahal. As you yeah. say, he chucks it out of the way. But watch behind, Jeremy. What is going on that uh, Alex Barron ended up launching himself down? Can we spot it in the bottom of the picture here? We we'll see a few cars heading down the hill. We see PJ go through. Well, we don't see what started that. He just suddenly launched himself. Those safety workers are lucky as well because, of course, they were attending to Brian Herter. Yeah, and, and I look at that again on the replay, and, you know, you can see the way Moore and Herter closed off on Bobby Rahal. Bobby was very conservative down there in Turn 5. I think he took uh, his young teammate there by surprise. And there's Herter looking around him here, and he puts a look at him. You could just see him brace himself there. He sees Barron coming down towards him, and the corner workers... Well, the cart safety team there, they uh, luckily were just, just paying enough attention to their left there to look up and see Alex Brown flying down towards him. Yeah, frightening, frightening accident indeed. Look at this, that's the moment. He braced himself. Natural thing to put his hands up, of course, is probably the worst thing he can do, but... Uh, yeah, he didn't, uh, he didn't put him on top of his no, helmet. That no. wouldn't have been smarter. He just put, put him up into his chin. I think mainly to get his hands away from the steering wheel. There's not, not too many places you can put your hands in that uh, situation. There's not much room there, of course. But there is Alex Barron out of the car, out of the Eagle, a shame. Uh, that Eagle's been running awfully well for the first couple of races. It ran, made his debut just last week at uh, Mid-Ohio, and he'd been running pretty well this weekend as well, fitted with that new Toyota RV8D engine. But uh, I don't know what happened there. Maybe he just lost it on the braking there. Cold tyres, of course. I mean, just coming out of the, out of the pits, and uh, you're braking there from over 200 miles an hour uh, into that tight second gear left-hander at Turn 5. Now they've got the problem of trying to get the thing off. The car of Brian Herter, of course, is still stuck down underneath that car and it uh, can't be a particularly pleasant experience to have a car sitting on top of you. It's great to hear that he's not hurt, but uh, they've now got to try and get that off without uh, doing any further damage either to him or, well, not really much about the car. I think they're pretty badly damaged already. They've also got a truck in there that perhaps they can lift it off. I think that's probably a more sensible idea. And, uh, well, we are certainly seeing plenty of incident again here, aren't we? Bobby Rahal is uh, now... Uh, 
up front. Well, he's been into the pits, actually. Bobby has made his stop now. He's decided to take advantage of this yellow to make his pit stop. That means that Greg Moore is now a race leader who has not decided to come into the pits yet. That's an interesting move. Andretti's moved up to second. Again, here we go. Brian breaking late. Yeah, but look at, his, look at his car in relation to the others there. And I, the, he's, he's certainly breaking late, but Bobby has been pretty conservative there. And uh, Greg Moore got out of the brakes, got onto the brakes a little bit earlier than Herder. Yeah, Herder certainly braked too late there. And you can see him turn the car left to try and avoid his teammates and then take the consequences after that. And uh, look at Brian Herder there bracing himself as he sees Barron's car coming down at goodness knows what speed, straight at him. Yeah, I mean, that must have been one of the most frightening experiences of his racing a career, I should think. It's one thing when you're having a shunt, and uh, to a certain extent, you're just hoping that it all ends peacefully, as Michael Andretti said last week. But when you see someone heading straight towards your car, and there's nothing you can do about it, that really is a nasty situation. There, they lift the car away. Brian is OK. That's the good news. And this race will continue. Is race leader after 12 laps, Michael Andretti in second. Gualter Sales is in, uh, up in third as a result of not being into the pits at all. But this is another replay, Jeremy, of the incident that's caused the yellow here. Yeah, and uh, certainly as it came down into the braking area, Herta was under pressure from Greg Moore. So you can see there in second place, he knew he was going to hit the back of Bobby Rahal. Extremely bad news that would be. So he gets hard on the brakes. Actually, you can see him turn the car there, hard left. He spins off there. Don't know, he just catches the, the left front wheel there on the barrier. But uh, he might have got away with that. Uh, there might not have been too much damage, but uh, a few seconds later on, well, look at all these cars just streaming past here. A whole bunch of cars come comes through. At the back of the fact, there's a little bit of dicing going on there with uh, Richie Hearn, I think, and uh, Robbie Gordon. But uh, right at the back, there is PJ Jones, and behind him, on the out the left, on the right-hand side of the picture, Alex Barron. Look at the. Look at those safety guys diving for cover there. Yeah, that's one of the scariest aspects of the whole accident, the fact that the safety guys were charging out of the way. You know, uh, PJ and Alex must have been coming down pretty much together, looking at the timing there of, uh, of where PJ turned in and when Alex arrived on the grass. They must have been pretty close together as they came down that hill. Yeah. I just hope that uh, nothing happened between those two teammates that actually set that up. That's uh, true, because before, the, uh, before they come into the pits, uh, certainly the Eagle was ahead of the Reynard, and there is uh, a huge uh, round of applause there for Brian Herder as he clambers finally out of that car once they got Barron's car out of the way. Uh, but after those pit stops, the two All-American racers guys who paint changed positions. So Barron was behind Jones as they'd come out of the pits. And uh, whether he uh, got uh, tangled up a little bit with PJ trying to make a move down there, it's, it's tough to say. But uh, those two, uh, they've been battling hard. Of course, totally different chassis. Actually, different engines this week because Alex Barron in the Eagle had the advantage of the new Toyota engine, the RV8D, which has been showing pretty good form the last couple of races. And PJ saddled with the older RV8C, which is uh, probably a good 40 or 50 horsepower down on the newer motor. It looks as though we're going to have another lap before they go green. It's Greg Moore, race leader from Michael Andretti, Walter Salas. Dario Franchitti up to fourth, ahead of Deferrin, Fernandez, Canaan, Pruitt, Vassa, and Zanardi in tenth. So there's Bobby Rahal, and uh, of course now having made that stop, he's actually come back into the pits again. Now this is interesting. What is going on for Bobby? Do you think that there was a bit more in that contact? Well, I think uh, he's he's at the back of the pack already. He uh, by making that pit stop, he kind of chickened out on his strategy there, and he came in uh, to make that pit stop that put him all the way to the back of the pack. And uh, even on a, a couple of laps of caution here, you're going to use a couple of gallons of fuel. So he came in there, nothing to lose, just top it up that last little couple of gallons in the car that'll make, enable him to do another lap later on in this race and uh, we've got 13 laps in the books uh, now and uh, it's it's uh, not inconceivably he can get through on, on just one more pit stop so we'll see it's gonna be a tough order i think he'll need another caution or two to in order for that strategy to be able to pay off but uh, back at the front of the field of course greg moore and gualter salas in third place in the peyton coin car have yet to make their first pit stops yes but presumably they're going to push it right up to the limit to lap 16 or lap 17. In fact, it'll be a bit more than that because of the number yeah. of yellows we've had. Yeah, it will. It'll be, there should be at least 17 and possibly 18, and that'll put them in great shape for the end of this race. They will definitely uh, be able to go from there to the end on one 
just one more pit stop and a pretty good strategy certainly by Peyton Coin Racing there they've got nothing to lose they start at the back of the pack Gorta Salis but he's only made a handful of starts this year but he's sitting in for Dennis Pitolo who had a, a 15 race uh, package this year with Smith Klein Beecham and Gorta he doesn't drive regularly he has no testing at all he did a very good job really to qualify in 20th place and incidentally he was about a half a second quicker than Mauricio Guzman's pole from last year so great effort by Gualta Salas and he was fast in the warm-up he and his, he and his teammate Michel Jourdain, Jourdain Jr. were first and second in a warm-up this morning so those cars working very well good strategy by Peyton Coyne The overhead view as the cars make their way round on this final lap of full course yellow before they go green again. They will start to pick the pace up in a moment. 13, uh, nearly 14 laps have been completed out of the 50 here at Road America. And uh, wow, we've seen quite a lot of incident already. Let's just quickly run through what's happened. At the start of the race, we saw a couple of separate incidents where Pruitt got hit by the Ferran. Got back on track and Pruitt is still in this race. He's in eighth position, as you can see from the classification. But behind him, Zanardi hit the back of Alonso Jr. Zanardi survived it but had problems, had to make a pit stop. Hunter went out, Carpentier went out in that same instant. We've also seen other problems. You can see the cars out. Helio Castroneves had a header break. Ribeiro out of the race. But then the accident that we've, that's caused this yellow, Brian Herter spinning, nearly hitting the back of his teammate. And then Alex Barron appearing out of nowhere and arriving on top of Brian Herter's car. Those are all the incidents we've seen so far in this race. Let's hope it sort of uh, calms down and settles a bit now as we get ready for the green flag. Are oh, you ready for Greg Moore to put the hammer down? Here he goes. On board, Michael Andretti in second place. Great restart from Greg Moore there. Michael get, got left behind a little bit. No doubt about that. An excellent restart from the Canadian as he crosses the line to finish lap 14. And in fact, Walter Sales has had a great restart. Look at Sales in third position attacking Michael Andretti. He drove one at Long Beach earlier this year, remember? And now he's putting the pressure on. Decides against it. Settles back into third. Yeah, smart young man. He qualified a magnificently at Long Beach which is said on the, on the second row of the grid, but there, on down the inside goes Dario Franchitti to take away third place from Gualta Salas. Yes, he's done it. Dario Franchitti got past there, so Franchitti is up into third, and it looks as though De Ferran was also lining up to get past Gualta Salas, so maybe there's going to be a change for fourth position. But Salas uh, won't just give up the battle here. He uh, has allowed a couple of cars to go through. Fernandez has gone past. Behind, there's a big gaggle of cars. Zanardi's in the middle of all that, and uh, Vassa is there too as well. In fact, Vassar, I think, is the first of the two target cars. Salad, of course, is, uh, is uh, towards, uh, towards the end of a, a stint of fuel. It's low on fuel, but his tyres are pretty well worn. And the other guys, of course, taking advantage of their fresh rubber to make a move early in this stint. So, all fun and games here as Adrian Fernandez, the winner from Mid-Ohio, last time out. He's now featuring up there in sixth position, so he's gained a fair bit of ground. Qualified in ninth place. A very, very consistent season from the Mexican, as we see PJ Jones has gone off. PJ Jones, we don't know uh, if he was involved earlier with Alex Barron, but whatever. Here, PJ Jones has gone off into one of the gravel traps. Now, they will try and sort that out with uh, one of the cranes. You can see it coming down. They should be able to clear that under just a local yellow, and hopefully, Jeremy, it'll stay uh, green flag racing. It'll be a shame to, to get another full course caution. Yes, indeed, and uh, certainly local yellow flags will be out down there at that corner. I think it's in turn eight, but let's get on the pits and with Brian Hurd. What happened to got you in trouble to start with? Well, you know, I, I think I think my motor was going off. It was a little soft, and uh, it just didn't seem to have any juice down the straight. Bobby got by me, and Greg had a run. So I tried to brake really late to keep Greg back, and uh, I ended up touching Bobby and spun me around. I got stuck there, and I don't know what happened to cause Baron to go off, but he obviously did, and then I saw him. You actually saw it coming. We could see your head ducking down. Yeah, I mean, that's all I could do at that point. I was a sitting duck, but, uh, you know, I just really think thankful thank god that uh you know the car went up instead of straight and uh you know i guess that was my lucky day in a way it didn't hit you at all it literally went right over the top it actually hit my it hit my hands but uh you know not not too bad so you know I, shoot I, it could have been a lot worse yeah, but you have to be so frustrated considering how well you'd qualify yeah i'm more pissed off than frustrated right now simple answer
Well, back to the racing and Greg Moore, race leader, under attack from Michael Andretti and Dario Franchini. We've got uh, Mercedes-Benz Power leading, Ford in second, Honda in third, and a great challenge on the cards. Remember, Greg Moore has another couple, two, three laps before he has to come into the pits, whereas the two behind him have already made their first pit stop, but Greg could have the advantage, he could have the last laugh, because he'll only have to make one more stop after this one. And he should be able to run pretty far flat out to, towards the end of the race as well, so he'll be able to make uh, take advantage of where he is now, trying to hold up Michael Andretti a little bit. When he comes in to make his pit stop, he will fall to the back of the pack, but with a bit of luck, he will have some clear track ahead of him, and he'll be able to make a good time uh, on the race teams before they have to make their stop in another, what, uh, eight or nine laps after that, so there's a lot of strategy to be played out this afternoon, but it's going to be a really interesting day here at Elkhart Lake. Yes, that's right. Uh, Moore's not really had a result here to talk of in the past. Last year, he went off uh, trying to pass Ray Hall for seventh position, and uh, as they come across the line, look at the run that Michael's got on him. He's really fast up to the straight, and surely there, Michael's got a great chance to overtake, gets down the inside, makes it look very easy, and Moore definitely lost some speed. Look how close Frank Kitty is to the back of the player's car now. Is he going to make a move? Frank Kitty perhaps being a little more cautious here, as he still knows they're in the early stages of this race. Michael Andretti just blew past Greg Moore there, and now perhaps with a chance to establish a lead again, the sort of lead that he was enjoying before. Our first four course yellow. Watch Dario here. Dario Franchini, is he going to have a go into turn five? No, nope. has a look, but uh, settles behind him again. Thought about it, but very late on the brakes there, downhill into turn five was Greg Moore, and uh, he's uh, certainly not able to keep the pace of the race leader at this uh, point in the proceedings, but he wants to try and stretch that field. If he can get another couple of laps out of it, he won't be too concerned at this stage. There's a long way to go. He knows that everybody else has to make a couple more pit stops. In any case, and there is Dario Franchini using up all the road and more, isn't he, off through turn eight there. Yep, but he looked uh, under control, just a little bit of curb he was using as they come through the carousel. Now this is a difficult corner to follow a, another car because it's so long, you lose the downforce on the car. But they're running in fairly low downforce trim at this racetrack anyway. Something like a, a thousand to fifteen hundred pounds less downforce here than they would be running at uh, a street track where they pile the wing on. Look at this, uh, still the battle for second going on here. Yeah, and as you say, that lack of downforce makes these cars very, very light under braking as well. They don't have that downforce to help them slow the cars down for the corners. Makes them very skitterish indeed. And we've seen a lot of cars off in the gravel tracks. We saw Alex Barron go off and PJ Jones, of course, already in this race. And a couple more problems down the field in some traffic. But uh, they're tough cars to drive. They've got 900 horsepower and not a lot of downforce. No, that's right. And uh, as you say, braking becomes a particularly tricky aspect of it all. Michael Andretti's lead up to one and a half seconds at the end of just one lap of getting past Greg Moore with Frank Kitty settling there in third position. Moore seems to have... Uh, Got himself going again. Now, whether it was just a slight miscue or slight flutter from the engine on that last lap, difficult to say. Perhaps Michael just had the best run up the straight. And it's settled down now with more second. Franchini third to Ferran fourth. Fernandez up to fifth. Then Canard in sixth. Alex Nardi is seventh. Scott Pruitt eighth. Paul Tracy in ninth place. And Christian Filippaldi is in tenth position. Well, I guess... And uh, yeah, Salas took the opportunity that time around to come into the pits. 17 laps on the board, I would think we'll probably see Greg Moore in this time around. If he reckoned if he could get to lap 18, that'd be really good news for Greg Moore. He can go, he can pretty much run that fuel mixture full rich, get maximum power out of that engine, and hopefully run to the finish here, just one more pit stop. And that could put him in extremely good shape at the end of the day. It'll be a while though before he shows himself back up towards the front of the pack. There's going to be a lot of shuffling to come in these next few laps. Yes, that's right, and it will depend to a certain extent on how many more incidents and offs that we see. We've seen a, a good bunch of them throughout the weekend, lots of visits to the gravel trap. That latest one of PJ Jones, thankfully not uh, causing a full course portion. And uh, here we go, Frank Kitty again having a little think about it, but not really too bothered. No, and Greg Moore looking very comfy, looks very good on the brakes, doesn't he? Really good, able to brake late and very stable, that car looks. They work very hard on the car, setting up for the race, they're not too worried about qualifying. And here is Greg Moore, and uh, does he come into the pits? Yes, he does. He tries to wait till the last possible moment to show his hand. Not that it's really relevant to the other guys, they're not going to come in in any case. But here it comes now, Greg Moore, through the chicane of the pit entrance, and now down to the 60 mile an hour speed limit. Yes, the 60 mile an hour limit doesn't start until the first pit garage, or the first pit box, I should say. They have to come through that coned area, they can come through there flat out, but if they knock a cone down, then it is a penalty. They have to do a drive through through the pits once again. That is the penalty for knocking a cone down. So you can't charge in too quickly. And this 
this is a critical stop for the Forsyth crew. Let's see just how long it takes. This is a full tank of fuel that's going on board. And this time he drives away, or does he? There's a problem. There's a problem getting it into gear. And can he get it into gear? No, he can't. Eventually, no, nope, it still doesn't want to go in. What is going on for Greg Moore? Can you believe it? It still won't engage. And now they're being told they've got to bring the car back to try and get this car out. Oh, Greg Moore, we saw the problem he had. He was leading in mid-Ohio two weeks ago, or last week rather, and uh, he had that incident in the pit where he hit the Penske that was stopped in front of him. And now there's some other problem, which yeah. is denying him the chance to get out. There's something in the gear mechanism, they cannot select first gear. He's, uh, you can hear the engine rev away there you just can't select any gear by the looks of it it's a sequential shift of course you pull it back for first gear you pull it back uh, for each subsequent gear and i'm sure he's tugging and pushing on that lever and he can't find anything although finally he finds a gear but a lot of revs and no, no real no. drive there so it looks like a drive train problem there yeah. and finally the engine is dead he cuts it off and looks like the end of greg moore's day what a tragedy for this young man oh it's just not going for him at all at the moment i mean he's driven superbly so far here today he drove well at mid high until he made that uh, rash mistake in the pit lane which he's rude ever since but more is out of the road america event alex nardi who remarkably has found himself up into fifth position now he started 11th currently fifth that hardly tells the story of course he hit the back of alonso junior on the opening lap of this race he stayed up near the front in the top 10 then he dropped away dropped way down to about 14th 15th place then he made a pit stop he's on a different pit stop strategy to the others and they only seem to change the one tire on that to pit stop which is an interesting point but since then he's putting in some uh, remarkable lap times certainly is and uh, of course he only stopped actually because of that accident uh, uh, where one of the cars went off the road I'm not sure who was, who was the first into when Ribeiro went off the road and stopped at the side of the track the leaders actually came only a couple of laps after Alex and Nardi, so pretty similar fuel strategies that they will be able to run they are back on board now with the race leader Michael Andretti and right behind him is Dario Franchitti who has closed right up in the last couple of laps onto the tail of Michael Andretti and unlike in that first into the race where Michael Andretti was able to pull away into the distance not so this time Ben no it's uh, definitely a race of it up front now between Andretti and Franchitti Franchitti in the 143s as was Alex Zanardi last time around everyone else in the 1 minute 44s or higher and now we should get a chance to see as we go across the line there goes Andretti there is Franchitti there is the gap between the two of them much much closer than it was Gilles de Ferran a little further back in the distance in third place he's some three seconds behind Michael Andretti then it's Adrian Fernandez in fourth place Alex Zanardi fifth Tony Canard's running in an excellent sixth place the rookie doing a fine job again Scott Pruitt seventh Paul Tracy eighth Christian Fittipaldi in ninth and then Jimmy Vassa in tenth position but Franchitti is the one to watch at the moment applying the pressure to Michael Andretti yeah and who you do back to back a little bit there is uh, Adrian Fernandez under pressure from Alex Zanardi that is a battle for fourth and fifth position right ahead of them is Gilles de Ferran going up the Toyota Bridge and turn left there into turn six here though the battle for fourth place and Alex Zanardi he's the he's the talk of the town that's for sure he had that huge fine thrown at him last weekend after those uh, three on-track incidents with PJ Jones JJ Leto uh, and Elio Castro Neves and uh, yet more uh, controversy let's say with that incident on the first lap today with Alan to Junior, but he's still out there on the racetrack. He's charging very hard. And that's interesting listening to him go there through the carousel of near They're easing off the front layer halfway through that very quick corner. And here, that's the kink. They call it a kink. I can't believe that's a corner in my book, then. Yeah, don't think he was quite flat, was he? It sounded like there was just a little, little breathe on the throttle through there in race conditions. That's no great surprise. They do take that corner without lifting in qualifying, but again, only when the car's perfectly set up and everything is working in their favour three places around this circuit as you mentioned earlier that they're traveling at over 200 miles an hour and then under very heavy braking for a tight corner at the end of it there is tony canaan running in sixth position so he's a little way behind the battle between fernandez and zanardi at the moment but nonetheless doing a great job first time here yeah. and he hadn't even tested before the teams came this weekend never even seen the place before this weekend tremendous effort by Tony Canaan and pulling away from a good battle behind him with uh, Scott Pruitt Paul Tracy and Christian Filipaldi and then Jimmy Bassett Richie Hearn and Mauricio Gujamin and Mark Blundell all pretty much nose to tail a great battle but uh, we're back on board with Zanardi and the, the gap from Zanardi back to Canaan is uh, a little bit less than five seconds uh, 
out, but that's a great effort by Tony Kanan, for sure. Well, we've seen uh, one of the front runners out go out of this race. Greg Moore, we've got a chance to hear from him. We watched you in anguish there try to get it going, but the thing that I can't help but wonder is about this whole championship scenario and the hopes that you were keeping alive, and now time's starting to run out, so how do you play it? Well, I mean, we just got to wait and see what happens in this race today, but... Um you know, it's, there's you know there's still a few more races to go, and I'm not concerned about the championship. All I want to do is win a couple more races. And you know, Mid-Ohio last week, and we let one slip through our fingers. And I think we had a good good plan going into this race. So I'm just real disappointed. You were the only team that looked like you had a chance to make this a two-stop day, and that was going to be so big later on. I would gather. It sure was, and that was our plan. And, you know, we, we knew we'd run out that first first tank, and uh, you know, no matter what, you know, you know, uh, yellows or no yellows, and. You know, it just kind of everything went according to plan. It just right there at the end, you know, when I, when I tried to leave, race is over. Thank you. Well, a real disappointing day for Greg Moore. He lies uh, down in the third place in the championship coming into this race. He was only four points behind. Jimmy Vassar had a great chance of getting into a clear second place in the series. But more importantly, as he said, of taking the win. And he would desperately to love to take another victory. Got a bit of a lean patch in the uh, mid part of the season. On board now, though, with Bobby Rahal. Now, remember, Bobby is on a completely different uh, strategy, really, to everyone else. He uh, played it one way, then played it the other. They, they seem to sort of fall halfway between, didn't they, Jeremy? Now he finds himself down in 17th position, but obviously still going quickly. Yeah, well, not really. He's actually making no progress whatsoever. He's just uh, in a train of cars there and not making any impression at all on the car in front of him, which is J.J. Leto. And right behind him, in actual fact, is Aunt Maya in the loader, the yellow car. Just for a very quick glimpse of it, perhaps we'll see a glimpse of it there. There is Aunt Maya, and he is keeping pace with Bobby Ray, who, of course, qualified third fastest for this race and uh, seems to have a pretty good car. Well, apparently, yes, they can see a left rear wing end plate flapping in the breeze there. That uh, won't help matters, but it shouldn't make too much difference. It will disrupt the airflow, though, over that rear wing, and that could make a bit of difference. It'll make a little bit of difference, certainly. That uh, almost certainly sustained when uh, Brian Herder spun into him down at this very point on the racetrack here, turn five, and you can see uh, Ray Hall there uh, applying the power, coming out of the corner, a little bit of opposite lock and uphill, and again into turn six, and really making no impression at all on JJ Leadhead, running very similar lap time to these guys, and uh, Ray Hall running back in 17th place. Well, for Team Ray Hall, they started with both cars up front. They've got one car left, and he's quite a long way towards the back now. Andretti, race leader, after 25 laps of this race have been completed. Frank Kitty in second place. To Ferran in third, Fernandez fourth, Zanardi fifth, but he's in the pits. Alex Zanardi comes into the pit lane. Now remember, he did stop a little earlier than the other front runners, and now he has to make his stop a lap earlier. We reckon that uh, the front runners, the leaders, Michael Andretti, etc., will have to come in next time around. So the uh, target Chip Ganassi team go to work. The fuel going on board. It is a full load of fuel that has to go on board. He gets a gear, okay unlike Greg Moore, and he gets away cleanly. So, Zanardi makes a successful second pit stop there. He will have to make one more pit stop to make it through the rest of this race. He ran a bit wide there through turn number one on those cold tyres, but he is still up there. Yeah, and still in contention for this race, despite what's happened. He missed the uh, apex there, of course, in turn three also. So, he's uh, running hard, and there, on the side of the road, the exit of turn one, the Vision Reynard Ford Cosworth of Scott Pruitt. He'd been running so well there in seventh place, and apparently engine problems for the car number 20. We mentioned him earlier, Jeremy, at the beginning of the broadcast. He announced yesterday that he's switching teams next year. He's leaving Pat Patrick and going to the Archero Wells team, the team that has uh, Toyota power. Interesting uh, switch there. Very interesting indeed. Certainly Toyota has made big strides this year. Uh, Max Papi's right now actually running in 13th place and Robbie Gordon in 14th. Uh, that's the two Archero Wells cars at the moment. Robbie Gordon will be giving up that seat next year to Scott Pruitt, who really is uh, one of the older drivers in the field. And there is the race leader, Michael Andretti, into the pit lane. Yes, so Michael is in, but is Dario Frank no, Kitty in? Not. He's not. He's decided to do another lap. Is that because he's getting better mileage from the Honda? We'll have to wait and see. Let's listen up for the radio as well. Ed Nathan on the radio to Michael Andretti. Hopefully we should get a chance to hear this as he makes his pit stop. Michael. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, still, still, go, go, go. Good stop, good stop from Neiman as Michael Andretti gets going again and uh, rejoins the track. And we made his stop 60 miles an hour up to the last uh, garage. 
to the last pit box and then he can release that button and then he goes on to track at full pace. The car sliding around a bit. Here is our new race leader then. It is Dario Franchitti now who hasn't made his second stop and surely you don't get much uh, you don't get much option here Jeremy. You don't get much window. You can't go three or four laps more than the competitor because of the length of this track. No, that's absolutely right. It doesn't really matter when they make their stop because they, their window, they have made that extra stop in any case. So they're looking at three stop tracks in any case. So it doesn't really matter when they make their stop. It won't really make any difference to the fuel mixture they'll need to run. But I'm yeah. sure we will find Dario in this time around. The only difference it may make is that Dario can put in a really quick lap here in terms of track position. If his team can get him out quickly, then of course he might come out ahead of Michael. That's very true. Take advantage of the fresh tyres on this car, or the, uh, the hot tyres, I should say, on this car. And uh, if you can make a good clean stop and then get back ahead, out ahead. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see. But here he is, Dario Franchitti, now through this final turn, onto the front straight, and uh, pulls across and into the pit lane. Yes, yeah, so uh, that last lap for Dario Franchitti, he pushed as hard as he could there to try and uh, make sure that when he comes back out, he's got a chance of getting out ahead of Michael. We will try and keep an eye on the battle. The Ferran is in. Fernandez is also in. So Fernandez managed to go to this lap for... Just that one inch lap to Michael Andretti. Tony Canard also in. Let's keep an eye on this pit stop. This is a crucial one for the Scotsman. The man who went out after taking pole position in the last race at mid-Ohio. The clash with Brian Herter. Good clean stop, 12.8. Try and miss the tyres in the pit lane. Otherwise, you pick up a penalty. And we watch out for Michael Andretti coming down the main straight. Now, where is Michael? He's not in view as yet. But remember, of course, there. He goes past us. There's Michael. You can just see him in the background. But remember, he's on a good warm set of tyres but I have to say Dario's got out well ahead of Michael and it's very unlikely that Michael's going to be able to repass him that quickly so Franchitti looks to be in great shape here yeah, and also ahead of them are JJ Leto and uh, Bobby Rahal who are running in tandem as they came past us here they passed us in ninth and tenth places because everybody else ahead of them was into the pit lane so that's going to be interesting to see that shuffles out there is uh, the car of Bobby Rahal behind him is Dario Franchitti so that's how it's played out and everybody still has one more pit stop to come. Interesting situation here as Frankitti finds himself behind Ray Hall. Ray Hall is ahead of Frankitti in track position here because of the slightly different strategy that uh, Ray Hall is on. But Bobby is still going to have to make uh, another stop as well. We are on board with Richie Hearn at the moment. He lies down in 13th position, coming down to the turn five area. So he's in the swift chassis, of course with the Firestone tyres. Here's the R, another Swift chassis on the Goodyear tyres. Michael Andretti having rejoined after his pit stop and now finds himself uh, behind Dario Franchitti and behind Bobby Rahal who is uh, up there. JJ Leto also up there on that different strategy. In fact, uh, JJ was the only one who went a like, little bit further earlier, wasn't he? Well, he actually came in with uh, Bobby Rahal on lap 11, which is only a couple of laps after the other guys. So uh, they're still going to have to make uh, another stop pretty soon now. And I think unless there's any more cautions, they're not going to be able to really be in this fight to the end of the race. Because they, I think, I'm pretty sure, are going to have to make two more pit stops. And that's going to kill their hopes of winning this race. Yes, so it does look as though they're not going to feature. But at the moment, until they make their stops, it is Leto who leads from Rahal in second, Franchitti in third, then uh, Defer in for so DeFerrin also got out ahead of Michael now there's an interesting situation yeah both of those cars of course made their pit stops one lap later you're talking about that lap on hot tyres and that's what got Frank Kitty ahead of these guys so great work there by Team Cool Green great strategy look at the lap time JJ Leto's just put in that's an impressive performance he's just done a 1 minute 43.7 the Finn who's leading this race and uh, okay he might be slightly out of sequence but he's put in a lap time there that's worthy of any of the front runners we've seen so far today so he is a very fine effort by JJ JJ Leto, he pulled away from Bobby Rahal on that lap by a good, uh, uh, by a little bit over half a second, but on board now with Jimmy Vassar, and looking back to the Budweiser Ralph's car, that's another swift chance, as you said a couple of minutes ago, of Richie Hearn, who's also running well in this race. Yes, Richie Hearn uh, still being mentioned in connection with the drive at Team Rahal. Look at this uh, as he tries to close up to Jimmy Vassar. Good view of the downhill braking into turn five. That's what makes these cars so hard to drive in low downforce trim. They've got very steep downhill braking to deal with, which tends to make the light, uh, the rears go very light, very easy to lock them up. Meanwhile, Mauricio Guterman is in the pits. He may have a problem. It's Leto, our race leader, from Rahal and Frank Kitty. 
Frank Hitty is the race leader now for sure as Bobby Rahal is into the pit lane and uh, the all-important fuel goes aboard, the tyres are changed, it's a good stop for Rahal, there he is just going out of the pits now, but that means that Frank Hitty is in front. Let's hear now from Scott Pruitt who's down in the pit lane. Sidelined him. You're going to be running with the Arciero Wells team starting next year. How difficult a decision for you to come to this at this point of the season? Um, well, actually, I mean, I'm not even thinking about that. You know, we, we got a race in a whole weekend, and they went, unfortunately, turned bad in the race, and uh, they got hit at the start, and then, you know, kind of got things turned around because he broke the front wing, and unfortunately, the engine broke. So, you know, we got a lot of racing left this year, and we're, you know, working hard for the championship. It breaks a great string of success, but while that is fact that he won't be with Patrick Racing next year, it opens up a seat for Patrick, and it also opens up a seat wondering what's going to happen to Robbie Gordon. Gordon is going to make a move in another direction for 1999. So let's continue with that theme. Dan well, let's uh, actually see there that Mauricio Gujeman just came into the pits. He obviously is in trouble. Uh, they've been in, in and out of the pits several times now. We go on board with Gilda Ferrer now, who runs in second position, effectively, behind Dario Franchitti. He's being shown as third at the moment because uh, of Bobby Rahal's pit stop. He'll drop down the order once they go across the line next time. So the Ferran is effectively some two seconds behind Franchitti in second position. Yeah, he made up uh, three or four tenths of a second lap on the previous lap. There is Dario Franchitti ahead of him now, going up underneath the bridge there, cresting the hill, and uh, that's the gap. You can see it there, back to Gilles de Ferran. It's not a whole heck of a lot, and Gilles de Ferran is looking very good neither. Another quick lap time there, takes off another couple of tenths or so, and he's inching that little bit closer to Dario Franchitti. Yeah, this is proving to be uh, an interesting battle as we're into the second third of this uh, race. Very well, more than that, we're into uh, very much into the second half of this race, and the Ferran beginning to try and close up that gap to Dario Franchitti. Both Honda-powered cars, of course, Gilles Ferran hasn't won any races for quite a long time, hasn't won any races this year. He's been struggling with the Goodyear tyre, not uh, terribly effective on most kinds of track this year. They've uh, really had to give best to Firestone. But on this occasion, it does look as though Goodyear have come up with an excellent tyre, not only for qualifying, but in the race here as well. He seems to be able to push hard over a number of laps, and uh, those last few lap times, really quite impressive. So across uh, there going down the back section of the track, down into turn number eight at the moment. Let me tell you that Michael Andretti is uh, still in third place. There you can see the laps led so far. Goodyear have the advantage. That's really courtesy of Michael Andretti in the first stint. Firestone are now beginning to catch up a bit with Dario Franchitti in front. Andretti is in third. He's not running the same sort of pace as these two. There we are with Michael now. And the gap between himself and Gilles de Ferran just over two seconds. Yeah, and uh, certainly Michael Andretti doesn't look nearly as strong as he did in the early stages of, the, of, of this race. Before he came in for his final final pit stop, or the last pit stop, I should say, he was lapping consistently in the uh, mid to low 1 minute 43 range. At the moment, he's uh, unable to break out of the 44s, whereas the leaders are in the mid 43 second, 1 minute 43 second range. So that's kind of interesting, but uh, there is still uh, a long way to go, 19 laps to go around this four-mile road course, and uh, there's certainly plenty to play for. And there are the three leaders. You can see them all there. One, two, three. Dario Franchitti into turn one there. And uh, look at them, just on the left there, there's a big gravel trap. And that's all, all new. A lot of improvements on this racetrack since last year. That runoff in turn one has been leveled and a huge gravel trap uh, put in there, which actually saved Gilles de Ferran yesterday when he spun off exactly that point in qualifying. Just looking at the summary on the leader, started in sixth place. He's led just five of the 32 laps so far. You won't be too worried about that. The laps he wants to lead are the last few laps. Of course, uh, still circuit seat, <laughs> seeking that first victory in the Champ Car Series. His second season of racing, the switch of teams from Hogan last year to uh, Barry Green's team for the 1998 season. The partnership with Paul Tracy, and it's certainly Tracy who seems to uh, have suffered this year. He really hasn't got it together. Dario's been fast in virtually all of the qualifying sessions, particularly on any kind of road course or street circuit. He's been impressive on some of the ovals as well, but he hasn't quite strung it together in the race for the victory. He's had a couple of good results, uh, Long Beach particularly, but uh, Frank Kitty up front at the moment. You're looking a little further down the order here at Jimmy Vassar, Bobby Rahal, and Richie Hearn. Now they're running down in 10th, 11th, and 12th places, and uh, Hearn there really is beginning to put the pressure on Bobby Rahal. 
In the meantime, let me just tell you again that JJ Leto has just come into the pits. He was, of course, leading that race for one lap. He came into the pits, a lot of smoke from the back of JJ's car. There it is in the pit lane. Out come the fire extinguishers, off comes the steering wheel, and out momentarily will hop JJ Leto. A shame, but a good run by the Hogan Racing Team. They've had a couple of good runs last weekend in Mid-Ohio. They were running well until he was assaulted by Alex Zanardi. And another pretty good run again here this weekend. Of course, he, like Tony Kanon, never seen this racetrack before, and it certainly is a bit of an eye-opener here, but a good job by JJ Leto. This track, one of the toughest there is on engines, there's no doubt about that. We've seen engine failures determine the outcome of the race in many occasions in the past. It's a high speed, but they're braking from high speed down to slow corners. It's very easy to damage the engine on the downshade. They're all going to have to watch out for that. Dario Franchitti leads after 34 of 50 laps have been completed. 2.4 seconds behind him last time across the start-finish line, Jill De Ferran. Uh, Franchini's pulled away a little bit in the last couple of laps. De Ferran not able to maintain that sort of pace. Michael Andretti is still in third, Fernandez fourth, and, and Alex Zanardi is in fifth position. Meanwhile, down in the pits, we have Alex Barron. Now, remember, Alex Barron was the man who uh, launched himself over the top of Brian Herter a little earlier on in this race. If you were with us, you'll have seen Brian Herter lost control of his car down at turn five, and then all of a sudden he saw the car of Alex Barron approaching. Let's hear from Barron now. What looked to be a very scary action. Unfortunately, everybody's walked away. This is Alex Barron. Let's talk about what sent you into Brian Herta. Well, uh, there's a lot of heartbreaking going down into the back straight down there. And uh, I got in hard. And then uh, there's a lot of Dyson back and forth. And then uh, one of the cars moved over to the right side, knocked me into the grass. I just steer out in the grass or else I would have hooked into him. And then uh, once you're in the grass, you're going straight. And then, unfortunately, Brian was sitting there and uh, climbed up on top of him. It's just uh, real fortunate that he's okay and I'm okay. And uh, You were talking about what went through your mind as you were literally just hitting him there. Yeah, it's like slow motion when you're in the car. When you're in the grass like that, you're going pretty fast, but at the same time, it's slow motion. So uh, just real fortunate we got hurt. Fortunate that, uh, that, that uh, he's okay and also the corner worker is yes. okay. All right, Alex Barron, unfortunately, out of the race in a very spectacular way. Interesting to me, the fact that he didn't... Uh, dumping on his teammate, but uh, you know he's trying to make a move, and it's awfully tough to make a move on the outside line into turn five. Yes, that's right. Uh, Alex Barron has impressed me. We're on board, by the way, at the moment with Alex Zanardi. Uh, he lies in fifth position. Actually, so fourth place. Fourth, now, because yes. I think Adrian Fernandez uh, must have gone off the road. He lost about eight seconds uh, on the last time around. Uh, we heard a report he might have gone off the road and back on again in turn three, and uh, he lost uh, just over eight seconds on that last lap. So, uh, and off and on for Adrian Fernandez but he didn't come into the pit, so with a bit of luck, the car will be okay. And look at the time that Zanardi did on the last lap. It was a 142.2, and that's uh, certainly one of the fastest laps of the race so far. So Zanardi very much on the pace now after his early race problems. Taking a look at Bobby Rahal at the moment, he lies down in 11th position. We thought that he was really going to feature in this race. He had the lead briefly, but their strategy was to bring him in and really not take advantage of the fact that they hadn't come in on the first yellow, and he's going to have to make another stop as is everybody else up there so it really doesn't look that promising for Bobby Rahal the man who finished in third place last time out in mid-Ohio Richie Hearn you ride on board with him as he chases after Rahal and uh, Richie Hearn waiting to see what Budweiser will say to him at the end of this week and then decide whether he stays with Della Pena's team or perhaps he join up with Team Rahal there he is following the uh, his potential boss for next year Certainly the rumours uh, have linked those two together. And uh, right behind you, so there is the yellow Lola again of Aunt Ma. I'm going to give a call, another call to Aunt Ma as the Richie Hearn thinks about looking to move. And Aunt Ma really is doing a nice job of running in uh, 13th place with that Lola chassis and turning some very competitive lap times. Yes, uh, we ride back on board now with Deferrin. He lies in second, 2.3 seconds behind Dario Franchitti. Michael Andretti is uh, just over a second behind Deferrin, and we are expecting these leaders to be coming into the pits over the next lap or so. So, the Ferran's crew is over the pit wall. Whether that's a little bit of a dummy to convince the others that they will make a stop here, we'll have to wait and see. But it's got to be around this lap or the next lap to make their stops. Well, they, they, they could, any time they can make their stop now, they can certainly get to the finish with no problems. But they only came in on lap 27 last time around. We've done 10 laps since then, Ben. So the window for them really is over the next two or three laps. And 
and uh, I'd be surprised if they didn't sound another couple of laps and just equalise those stints. Well, that shows you I'm right and I'm wrong because uh, Dario Franchetti comes fastest on the racetrack and into the pit lane instead comes uh, Gilles de Ferran. Yeah, let's see if anyone else comes in. I think he's the only one, Jeremy. He's the only one who's decided to come in this early in the window. So uh, de Ferran comes into the pits, obviously going for the final set of Goodyear tyres, refuel the car and then go into the attack once again. Interesting, he obviously decided he wants to be out there and putting in quick laps. He wasn't getting held up, I wouldn't say, at any point there. He wasn't quite able to, to match Frankie Lee's pace. No, and I wonder, maybe that set of tyres just wasn't quite in balance for Gilles de Ferran. Maybe he didn't feel that they were quite as good as the previous set. So if he comes in now, he's certainly got plenty of fuel to get to the finish without having to come in again. And he can go hard now. And if this set of tyres just gives him a better balance to that car, as around the outside of him goes Mark Blundell. And Gilles de Ferran gets up to speed. Smart move, giving him room. No point in driving him off, driving him off the racetrack. And the defender will come back out onto the track in, I would make that to ninth position. So, Mark Blundell in that uh, ninth place. Then Jill DeFerrin into tenth place. Jimmy Vassar behind them now will be in eleventh position. But it's still Dario Franchitti, our race leader, after 37 laps have been completed. His advantage over Michael Andretti last time round, some 4.1 seconds. And now DeFerrin will hope that this last set of tyres is giving him exactly what he needs to be able to push hard in the closing stages. Could be they made a, maybe a tyre pressure adjustment to try and uh, get the best out of these tyres for this final, uh, well, 12 laps you'll have to go next time around, so 13 laps would have to be completed now by Gilles de Ferran uh, as he comes under pressure from Jimmy Vassar. Jimmy Vassar, of course, his uh, tyres are well up to temperature and gives him gain just a little bit through the beginning of that corner, but uh, onto the power early there is Gilles de Ferran gets a good round to the back straight and he's not going to be under pressure, I think, this time around at least from Jimmy Vassar. So the, the battle continues between those two. Uh, meanwhile, Frankini still putting in some good lap times. He did a 52-6. Look at Jimmy Vassar. He does have a little think about it. De Ferran sensibly just sort of holds middle ground. He's entitled to do that. And Jimmy Vassar wasn't able to take advantage of it. He wasn't going to take a huge gamble and really squeeze his way past. And now that De Ferran has got those tyres up to temperature, he should be OK over the remainder of this uh, first lap out of the pits. He gets on the power early out of turn 14. That's a, a potential pass opportunity to get the good exit there but it looks to me as though DeFerrin had as good as exit as he needs to stay in front all the way up to turn number one yeah and his tyres should be up to speed now for temperature properly and he should be able to run pretty fast towards the end of this race and we'll see what he can do we can see if he can make up uh, for this lost ground um, he was uh, not making an impression at all on Dario Franchitti we're on the board again now with Bobby Rahal as he goes down the hill here and into turn three and uh, he's got uh, two cars right behind him he has Richie Hearn and Art Meyer right behind him and actually Max Pappis too is closing on the back of those uh, three cars as well but back on board with a second place car of Michael Andretti and you can't see Dario Franchitti's last lap around Dario Franchitti 1 minute 42.6 I reckon that's probably about the quickest lap of the race and Dario really turning up the wick yes that's right it's opened his advantage up to 5.4 seconds as they approach the next round of pit stops he wants as big an advantage as possible he hopes the team can then take that advantage and build on it as well and beat the Newman Haas crew but it's critical phase of the race here to put in some fast laps Frankini goes past us again again neither of these two leaders decides to come into the pits just yet Zanardi is now in third position though and let's just uh, check the gap back to Alex Zanardi well he's about four seconds behind Michael Andretti Zanardi still in the hunt you better not count him out just yet as uh, we see the leaders have gone through in some very fast times once again for these two quicker again that time from Dario Franchitti and uh, Michael Andretti is pretty, pushing pretty hard at 43.9 but he lost more than a second that time to Dario Franchitti and now back into the third place car of Alex Zanardi he's as you say uh, just around about four seconds or so behind Michael Andretti downhill you just see Michael Andretti turning into turn five here comes now Alex Zanardi that's the slowest point on the racetrack around about 55 60 miles an hour uphill up one gear down again into second gear for turn six at the top of the hill and now through this wonderful sector track here hurry downs it's called great sector track that very quick right hand corner and plunging downhill once again this part of the racetrack is around about 150 feet in elevation lower than the highest point of the racetrack where we are up by start finish line yeah it's a huge change of elevation around this track the hill's very much steeper when you have to climb up them let me tell you than when you uh, watch it on the television set oh look at Zanardi what lost it there and that was just a mistake a lack of concentration whatever he ran wide out of the carousel and he saved it but that just shows you he is working hard to close up that gap to my
Michael Andretti. At the moment, though, last time round, it was about four seconds. He comes up to complete the lap, as meanwhile, Dario Franchitti crosses the line to complete lap number 40. There are still now just 10 laps to go, and surely he's going to be making a pit stop fairly soon. Another very quick time, Michael Andretti is taking this opportunity to come into the pits now then. Also, Alex Zanardi is in behind him, so Zanardi and Andretti, their pit crews, will do battle in the pit lane. Zanardi has often gained places in the pits, courtesy of his pit crew, and he did that last year here as well. He got past uh, the Pac West car of Mark Blundell in the pits last year. I wonder if it's going to happen here. I shouldn't think so. Michael had a great advantage, and it's a good stop. Gives up a lot of wheel spin there for Michael Andretti as he goes away, and there you can see in the corner of the screen out comes Alex Zanardi. He's still behind him. He might have made up a little bit of ground, but there comes Mark Blundell on the outside. He will get himself in between those two cars of Michael Andretti and Alex Zanardi. And now will uh, Blundell close there? He's closing right up on Michael Andretti. Still, of course, cold tyres, no tyre warmers, and they're allowed in Formula One. They use stone cold, fresh tyres when they put them on these cars in the pit stops. And we're back on board with Gilles de Ferran. So there it is. Bardell does get past Michael Andretti. We see the move completed. And of course, Mark is running a lighter fuel load. Michael's got a whole load of fuel, not a full tank, because uh, they've only had to put enough fuel in to last the last 10 laps, as opposed to 16, 17 laps, which is what a full tank will do. So they're not quite as heavy as they might be. But nonetheless, Mark is running very light now. He's uh, due into the pits uh, fairly soon. Bardell running in eighth position at the moment. Ferran being shown as ninth still, but remember, he's already made his pit stop, and things will begin to sort themselves out over the next lap or so as one or two make their stops. Don't fit discount Adrian Fernandez, Tony Canaan, they're both running up in the top five at the moment as well. So we really have got a good race on our hands here. Everybody's going to be able to turn up the wick. There's no worries about fuel consumption, and they'll just be able to go for it now. Absolutely right. And Dario Franchitti, so fastest lap after fastest lap, he really is uh, churning up the wick here. It's a tremendous drive by, by Dario Franchitti. He had to pass a slower car on the last lap round. There is Dario Franchitti. Nobody behind him. He passed a slower car of Michel Jourdain Jr. Put him one lap down, but uh, he really is driving an absolutely brilliant race. He lost a second on that last lap, but he still pulled away by a second more over the next cars behind him. So a great drive by Dario Franchitti. Could this be his first win? Oh, do we dare say it, Jeremy? He's come so close at Toronto earlier on this season. He had it all in his pocket just to take that first win, but it all went wrong when he lost it. He had a brake problem, a long brake pedal that meant that as he went for the brakes, it hit the throttle as well, and uh, he spun at the first corner, and that was the end of his chance on that occasion. He blew it last week as well in an incident with Brian Herter, but this time he has got a very real chance, but let's just wait and see. Don't forget Again, reliability is a huge factor here and a couple of years ago Alan Jr. led on the last lap he was leading and it was only at the corner that uh, Dario's at now that his engine blew and that gave the win to Michael Andretti so we really can't call this one yet you're absolutely right there's still uh, it'll be eight laps to go when he completes this lap that is this is lap 42 four miles a lap of course so a long long way around this wonderful road course here in the rolling hills of Kettle Moraine country and Dario Franchitti is in the pit lane Ben yes here he comes the vital pit stop then for team green they've had a few problems in the pits so remember this team expanded from a one car operation to two cars this year had to get new personnel in they've really taken a little bit of time to gel but now's their opportunity to show just how good they can be they were good in Toronto they did a fantastic job on his pit stops there now the pressure's on they have the race lead are they going to be able to maintain it once this pit stops completed it's into gear he spins the wheel gets it away cleanly they're happy with it but where's he going to be in terms of track position as he rejoins the circuit we're looking out the window to see where Michael Andretti may be he's a long way back still hasn't come across the line as Dario goes into turn number one Christian Filippoldi in yeah here is Michael Andretti's teammate Christian Filippoldi into the pit lane and finally now past us comes the car the second place car of uh, Michael Andretti right behind him is Alex Zanardi and Gilles de Ferran is back in the fourth place well there we go Christian gets out that's interesting de Ferran obviously losing out a little bit on the uh, pit stops Adrian comes back out Christian Filippoldi behind him and now we begin to see a sort through Dario Franchitti is in great shape here now he's got to hold it together in this last stint we have eight laps to go still and there you ride on board with Michael Andre
Andretti. He is in second position after the pit stops have all settled themselves down. Alex Zanardi still in the fight. Gilda Ferran's up there as well. You have to stay with us and enjoy the climax to Road America. Well, the Ferran has just pulled off right beside us here on the main start-finish straight. It's an engine that has let go, a little bit like in Michigan where he was so well up with the leaders just a few races ago. The engine blew up and now it's done it again and poor old Gilda Ferran. The luck just is not riding with him this year. No, that's a great shame. He's uh, he driven a great race here. He uh, wasn't quite up to speed perhaps with the other guys, but certainly a good, strong finish was on the car. Gilda Ferran climbs out of his car in disgust. The engine having expired, the Honda motor has given up with just seven laps to go here at Road America. Dario Franchitti is race leader. And let me tell you, he has an 11.6 second lead. Right behind Michael Andretti is Alex Zanardi. And that is a big battle for second place. De Ferran is out of it. And that means that everybody else behind moves up a slot. But let's just focus for a moment on Gilda Ferran. He can't believe his bad luck. Just as in Michigan a few weeks ago, an engine letting go when he was in a great point scoring opportunity. Yeah, certainly a, at the very least a top three or four finish here on the cards for Gilles de Verne not to be. And as you say, Michigan, he was running a fabulous race here today. He paced himself awfully well. The last 50, 50 miles or so, he was poised to run for that chequered flag and he wasn't able to do it. The engine expired on there as well. But uh, there is Dario Franchitti and we're back on board now again with the third place car of Alex Zanardi. And right ahead of him is Michael Andretti. This is a battle for second place. Yes, this is the closest battle at the moment. Let me tell you, there's a huge gap back from Alex Zanardi to Christian Fittipaldi, who lies in fourth position. Good result or good potential result for Fittipaldi and indeed for Newman Haas and Swift to have both cars going well. Fifth position now is Tony Kanaan. Great effort from him. Sixth place is Bobby Rahal. Seventh is Paul Tracy. Eighth position, having made an extra stop, and we're not quite sure what that was about, but Adrian Fernandez did make an extra stop. Yeah, I think that was for ex exceeding the speed limit in pit lane, and uh, these cars have... Uh, a speed limiter button, but the only work is the driver remembers to press that button. And uh, presumably, Adrian Fernandez forgot to do so and was caught speeding in the pit lane. That is an automatic drive-through penalty. And uh, that has dropped him out of contention, possibly for a podium finish. Ninth place behind Fernandez is Mark Blundell. Then it's Jimmy Fasser in tenth. And Jimmy, we saw a moment ago uh, having a spin. He got away with it. He has rejoined the track, but uh, that's dropped him down. And then look who's next. The man you've been uh, mentioning today, Jeremy, Arden Meyer. Yeah, I'm very impressed. He's only a couple of seconds behind Jimmy Vassar, the 1996 PPG Cup champion. And he's certainly been running a very fine race. This would be his best finish, his best previously. He's had a couple of twelfths, uh, but uh, 11th would be even better. And there's still a good way to go. Who knows, perhaps he can get himself in the top ten. That would be quite something. The final point at the moment is heading towards Robbie Gordon, who's ahead of teammate Max Pappis. And uh, those two enjoying their own battle. Richie Hearns back to 14th now. Michel Jordan in 15 and of course uh, Gilles de Ferran out of it he's being shown as uh, next up on the list but uh, out of the race unfortunately now as we go back to this battle for second position Michael Andretti in second at the moment Alex Zanardi in third now uh, Michael will no doubt be thinking back to 1996 when it looks as though he was going to finish in second only for little Al to blow up on the last lap so he won't give up trying and still hoping for another victory here at Road America a track that's always really been uh, very kind to him and he's had a great run of success here a three times winner as is his father and as is in fact Emerson Fittipaldi those three drivers have all taken three victories on this four mile track Michael would love to uh, go one ahead though and take win number four here today that's right he would indeed and uh, yeah, before this weekend this is one of the very few tracks uh, on which he's raced regularly in this country that he hadn't scored a pole position so he achieved that yesterday and he's looking for another win here I don't know he's got a pretty tall order I think he's going to have to rely on some problems for Dario Franchitti uh, but at this stage certainly Michael Andretti running along there in second place and Alex Zanardi I would imagine after all the dramas he's had in the early stages of this race he'll probably be pretty happy to settle, settle for third place yes that's right um, important points and it would give Alex a chance to open up the points advantage oh and Tony's off Tony Kanaan who's been running so well he's in fifth position how oh, has he got back on without losing any places he was only a fraction ahead of Rahal he must have lost positions to Bobby Rahal but he may have got back on ahead of Paul Tracy we'll have to see when we get a wider shot or as he comes past our commentary position poor old Tony but he has he has recovered it that's the thing it is indeed he lost there at turn eight the bottom of the hill and uh, there was a glimpse of the team cool green car of Paul Tracy behind uh, 
Tony Canaan there, but uh, there'll be some dirt on the tyres of Tony Canaan's car. You have to be careful through the kink, the next couple of corners also, uh, to make sure there's no uh, damage as well to that uh, LCI Reynard Honda. Look at this, uh, Zanardi certainly not given up on the chase of Michael Andretti. Different tyres they're using, of course. The Goodyear has been in great shape here this weekend, but the Firestones on Zanardi's car. Julian Robertson, uh, race engineer for Jimmy Vassar, was telling me earlier that the old Alex locks up. Oh, he made a mistake. He got too close to the back of Michael there, and uh, he so nearly got it all wrong again. Michael perhaps just breaking a little earlier than Alex expected, and he locks up, and uh, he saved it as well. So still we're seeing plenty of drama. Yeah, these guys are fighting pretty hard. There's a lot at stake here, and uh, I'm surprised I'd have thought Alex would who would have been throttling back a little bit, uh, but it uh, doesn't seem so. so I got wrong on that one yet again. But uh, here he is through the carousel. You can just listen to the throttle trace there uh, on the throttle there, halfway through the big lift, halfway around the corner. The qualifying they've been much uh, more committed, let's say, through that corner. And the kink of just about flat, just putting the throttle back. So this was slightly up into top here on the exit of uh, the kink there. Interesting. In qualifying of that lap we saw before the top of the show, we saw Michael Andretti changing the sixth gear before the kink. Of course, these tyres will be a little bit more worn now. Still some four laps to go here as Zanardi continues to pressure, but having dropped back a bit from Andretti. Across the line they go, past uh, our commentary position in the revised media centre, part of the $1.7 million refurbishment programme that's taken place here over the last 12 months. And uh, here's another example, big gravel trap on the outside on that last corner. We saw Altmaier bounce across that part of the track last year. And this year, a lot of changes to improve the safety aspects of this track. Christian Filippaldi running in fourth position at the moment. Two Newman Haas cars up there in the top four, but Michael Andretti running in second position at the moment and trying to stay in that position ahead of Alex Zanardi. Last time around, Zanardi made a little mistake down at turn five there. This time, he seems to get through a little more cleanly. Let me tell you, Dario Franchini's lead, though, we haven't seen a great deal of him in the last couple of laps, but it's stayed fairly constant. He's controlling it now. I don't think he's pushing that hard. It's uh, just over nine seconds. It was a little over ten seconds, but I don't think he's going to be too worried about uh, one second in a ten-second lead being taken away. No, I think you're right, and uh, we're back on board with Christian Fittipaldi. He's, uh, well, over 20 seconds behind the third-place car of Alex Zanardi, and Fittipaldi himself a long way clear now of Tony Canaan, who's actually moved back into fifth place despite that error, because Bobby Rahal has just come in last time around to make his final pit stop. So Rahal uh, having dropped back down the order again with that stop, that's put him down to ninth position. And as you say, Canaan back up to fifth, that's brought Tracy up to sixth place. And uh, what we said, it's uh, looking good for Newman Haas, it's looking good for Team Green as well, isn't it? If Frank Kitty can hold on to this lead position at the moment and Paul Tracy a potential sixth place finish, well, that really would be a tremendous result for the team, which has seen a number of up and downs already this year, but still looking for their first win in their current form. Of course, uh, Barry Green has seen success. And interestingly enough, uh, Jeremy, one Jack Villeneuve won this race, and it was his first race victory some years ago, wasn't it? As it was indeed, and uh, went on to win the championship the following year. That was, of course, in his rookie season. But uh, let's go down to the pit lane there and uh, have a word with uh, Kim Green, general manager. Down here. Everybody watching the monitors, very antsy. Kim Green, uh, it's a stupid question sometimes, but this time it really applies. What's going through your mind right now? Well, you know, obviously we've been in this position a couple of times this year already, so, you know, we'd like to get this one over and done with. Uh, Dario's driven a fantastic race. The crew's done fabulous pit stops. Uh, we've just got two more laps to go, or one and a half more laps to go, and we can you know, celebrate, I think, what we richly deserve, a win. And he hasn't said much on the radio, so you really don't know what's going through that young Scott's mind. Uh, he's a non-talker on the radio, likes to concentrate on what he's doing, and uh, hopefully we can finish the job off in the next lap or so. I guarantee you there's a lot of fingers, a lot of toes, everything is crossed in the Team Cool Pit. Well, uh, fabulous performance it would be, but he's still got a lap and a bit to do. And that's uh, about uh, five or six miles still to complete here for Dario Franchitti. Leader by 7.2 seconds. The gap's come down a little bit more, but I'm not going to get too worried about that at this stage. No, he came down by two seconds the last lap around, but uh, I think, as you say, nothing to be too concerned about. Dario has just been making sure that he doesn't make any mistakes. He has a lot of experience as a racing driver. He knows how to pace himself and pace the car. He look after the tyre look after the engine, there's no need to push it, he can really just on, put on cruise mode as he takes the white flag there from Jim Swintel, over the top of the hill there, there comes Michael Andretti, and behind him Alex Zanardi, 
race, second and third. The last lap then at Road America, the Texaco Avelina 200, round 14 of the championship, and is it finally going to be Dario Franchitti's first win in the series? There's the battle for second place, which continues, but surely Zanardi not close enough. Last lap, both of them going very quickly. A 42-0 for Andretti and a 41-8 for Alex Zanardi. I think part of the reason that the gap to Franchitti is closing is those two are having such a battle. They're pushing so hard for the second position that uh, they are closing that gap up a little bit to Dario Franchitti. Oh, oh Michael, Michael, oh, off. And uh, a tyre failure, we're being told. We heard it on the radio and we heard it. It's a tyre failure and that's taken Michael out. And what? A, Sorry, how Michael, many times? Job up there. How many times have we seen here things go wrong the last lap? Michael is out of second position. It puts Zanardi up into second place. Filippoldi up into third. Dario Franchitti will be unaware of all this and he won't be worried in the least about it. He's just got to get through the last few corners. Here he comes down the back stretch over 200 miles an hour towards Canada corner. This is where Alonso Jr. blew up a few years ago. Let's hope he gets through here cleanly. This is, of course, the Honda engine there for Dario Franchitti and Michael Andretti. Let's just go back to him very briefly. He had a tyre failure also in testing here a couple of weeks ago with just one corner to go for Dario Franchitti. Here comes Franchitti. It's going to be his first victory in his second season of Champ Car Racing. His first international win since winning with Mercedes in the International Touring Car Championship in 96. Franchitti wins it. Brilliant performance. Well done to Franchitti. Big cheers to Scotland because Franchitti has taken his first win in the series. Mark Blundell won races last year. Now Franchitti wins for Scotland and he will have so much support throughout the motor racing community, not only in the United States, but also in the United Kingdom, where he is such a popular driver. Michael Andretti, though, how can you believe the luck he's suffered this year? Second place was there. He'd driven superbly here this afternoon. He is angry. But Alex Zanardi congratulates Frank Kitty on a superb win here today. Well, nice to see that uh, Zanardi congratulating Frank Kitty as they slow down. But look at this replay, Jeremy. Here's what happened to Michael Andretti. A tyre failure is what happened, apparently. There it went. The rear tyre, I think, failed, and Michael Andretti on the brakes there. Turn five is one of the fastest parts of the race course, and they're into the tyre. But that's the same place that uh, Brian Herder and Alex Barron went off earlier on. High speed, you're coming down that hill at well over 200 miles an hour. Terrifying moment that must be for Michael Andretti. The rear tyre, let's go. Absolutely nothing you can do. Well, it's just a, a shock for Michael. He's out of the car. He's safe. Remember what happened to him last week, that huge accident at Mid-Ohio. He'd come back brilliantly here to take pole position, to be front runner, leader of the first part of the race. OK, they couldn't match Frank Kitty on the day. Frank Kitty was just superb today. They look set for second. But, of course, he was under a lot of pressure from Zanardi. The lap times they were doing in those last few laps, the two of them were pushing each other so, so hard, and it just couldn't quite last the distance. No, that's right, but it only had to do 10 laps. That's the amazing thing. He'd made his final pit stop on lap 40. 10 laps is all he needed to do. A full stint of it. Look at the damage there to the left rear tyre of Michael Andretti. The, the damage to the right side, well, that's from hitting the wall. But that left rear tyre in shreds, and that is what caused the problem for Michael Andretti. And 10 laps, uh, you've got to be surprised that that's that's pretty that's pretty amazing i know he did have a problem here in testing look again look at him fighting the wheeler on the brakes he's just trying to slow that car down the rear wheels of course having no real contact with the road and uh, nothing you can do there just hope again for the second re running he doesn't hit anything too hard yeah well and uh, the other frank kitty celebrating which is fabulous to see great uh, stuff for him and for team green as well and uh, let's just talk about that for a moment oh. because they've they've been waiting such a long time for this haven't they and as, as Kim Green said, they've come so close on so many times. Finally, Dario Franchitti, a winner. Franchitti on his slowdown lap then. Really just can't believe it. Pumping the air and uh, clenching his fist with his first win in the series. He's come close on a number of occasions. Today, he did not put a wheel wrong. He's made a couple of mistakes, uh, but this time, no mistake. They're the result. Franchitti from Zanardi. Fittipaldi in a good third. Look at Canaan in fourth. Great performance. Fernandez fifth. Paul Tracy for Team Green also. He in sixth position. Seventh for Blundell. Good effort for him. Rahul eighth. Vassar ninth. Then Meyer tenth. He did get in the top ten. Great effort. 
effort for him. Max Pappis in 11th, he got past Robbie Gordon towards the end, and 12th place for Gordon. The two Argero Wells cars both in the points. Andretti out, Richie Hearn did finish the race, Michel Jourdain also uh, finished the race, but then we're into the list pretty much of non-finishers in this event. Absolutely right, and uh, oh, look at Dario Franchetti hanging out of the car there. I can't imagine his father, George, comes to all these races. Uh, he pretty much lives over here these days. Uh, forget about Scotland. He loves going back to Scotland, of course, but I tell you what, there's going to be a few beers drunk tonight in Siebkin's Bar in Elkhart Lake Resort. Well, uh, as Dario makes his way around, there he is giving a big wave to everybody. Uh, this is one more replay of Michael Andretti's tyre failure. The left rear it was that failed, and then he just has to lock everything up and hope that he doesn't hit anything too hard. Yeah, and uh, the barriers there doing their job and keeping uh, the, the car onto the racetrack and into the tyres there. There's three or four uh, barrier layers of tyres there to go through at the end of that straight. Uh, the uh, safety margins here pretty well laid out on this racetrack. And, uh, Dar and uh, but what a heartbreak for Michael Andretti. He'd driven once again a great race and once again totally out of his control. He really didn't deserve that. But a man who did deserve today is Dario Franchitti. And boy, he's done a good job this season. He comes so close, so many occasions. Finally, he pulls the car into victory lane. Yeah, fantastic. Well done to Franchitti. And uh, well done to Team Green. Let's go down to the pits and hopefully we're going to hear an interview. Well, it'll take a few moments because they haven't got him right in there yet. So uh, let's just watch the pictures of Frank Kitty and hear from him as soon as he gets out of the car. Hang on, bud. The sense of relief that he must be feeling at this moment as he slowly brings himself up out of the cockpit and we'll get a chance to talk to him. On the side pod and he salutes the crew. <laughs> Yes, indeed, they love this moment, and why not? What a terrific job all day long in such an intriguing event. Dario, come down. Kim Green and everybody with the team coming over to hugs. This may take a while before we get a chance to hear from him. Barry on the other side of the car. And there's Barry Green with a thumbs up and a handshake, and look at that smile, it tells you 